Welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast, the photo imaging industry's leading news source. Here's your host, Gary Peugeot. The Dead Pixel Society podcast is brought to you by Media Clip, Advertech Printing, and Independent Photo Imagers. Hello again and welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. I'm your host, Gary Peugeot, and today we're joined by Richard Blank, who's coming to us from Costa Rica, and he's in, responsible for Costa Rica's call center. Richard, I need to know, how do I get to go to Costa Rica and live there and build a business? First thing. Oh, I can't thank you enough for having me as a guest on your podcast. And secondly, you got to get past your parents' guilt. Because <laughs> if you can do that, my friend, you can live anywhere in the world. There you go. So tell us a little bit about your company. And then we're going to go into why you're actually uh, speaking on this podcast. I mean, there's some transferable skills there, but I really want to know a little bit about what made you start this business and how it became a success? You know, it was really built on momentum before I came to Costa Rica. But when I was here, I was able to scale this company because I extended empathy. Mm -hmm. It's very easy. Costa Rica's call center is a dedicated nearshore bilingual call center that deals with outbound lead generation, appointment setting and sales, mm -hmm. inbound customer support, back office support, and even non-voice support. And Come February 6th, my friend, I'll be celebrating my 16th year in this extremely competitive industry where Amazon is right down the street. <laughs> but why am I doing this? Because as I say, I, I fell into it. Mm -hmm. I was a Spanish major at the University of Arizona. Mm -hmm. And at 27, I was given a one in a million opportunity to come to Costa Rica for just a few months and work at my friend's call center. Mm -hmm. Well, those couple months turned into four years of learning the business from the inside out, not sea level. Gary, when you sit with the proletariat, you break bread with them, mm -hmm. you know, you laugh and cry with them. You get all the secrets of the inside of the company. It's the people that make the engine go sure. and put the bricks down and, and give you the foundation. And they just didn't want to seem like a number or expendable. And if they did a good job, they wanted a sincere acknowledgement, not good job champ. Well, champ what? <laughs> right. Um, and so I, I guess growing up in Northeast Philadelphia, mm -hmm. graduating the proud Abington, I, I learned some things. I learned about authenticity and following through. Mm -hmm. And you can't just be a one trick pony because you're going to get called out on it. You need right, to right, really, yeah. you need to put in the, the long game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Philly's known for authenticity, right? I mean, you can't fake that Philly cheesesteak, right? Well, you get caught eventually. Exactly, exactly. And then you'll get embarrassed when you say that you do speak a language or you have the experience. And so mm -hmm. when you make yourself vulnerable, Gary, it actually makes you powerful because you're willing to, mm -hmm. it's not criticism. Right. You're asking for guidance. Right. I would love to know somebody who knows how to sling an arrow better than I do. And so when I was here as a guest in this country or even in the United States or wherever you want to live, mm -hmm. I knew my foundation of what I could do mm -hmm. when I could delegate and have faith in human resources, accountants, attorneys, mm -hmm. and people like that. It's the only way I could scale. It was too much. It was too big. I overextended and it wasn't fun anymore. Sure. There's right bus, right seat. I'm a goaltender. Started <laughs> at left wing, I ended up in goalie. And that's where I stayed since I was like nine years old. So I know my position on the hockey team. I'm just curious, right? Guy from Philly decides to major in Spanish. What was what was that thought process like? Did you have a career in mind, or are you just passionate about the language? Or an excellent question, Gary. Right? <laughs> I mentioned earlier about parents' guilt. Right. There's a lot of people that, when they're growing up, they might be under certain pressures mm -hmm. and have expectations in regards sure. to where they go to school and the friends they have and traditions that they keep and. I grew up beautifully. I had a very loving family and supportive family, but it was more on their structure. Mm -hmm. My sure. grandfather went to Harvard Law. My pops went to Columbia Business and my older brother went to Washington and Lee University. These are some serious division one schools. Sure. Now I didn't have the grades mm -hmm. and I didn't have the maturity. I still don't have the maturity <laughs> and I couldn't have gotten the grades, right. but I, I knew this that I was scared mm -hmm. because I had to make a huge decision. Mm -hmm. And could you imagine being in a box without walls sure. for decades? Sure. It, it would be one of those things where you see the images of someone where their life is just getting sucked away. And, and you know, when it really hit me, when I saw the Freddie Mercury video under pressure, 
Okay. And you watch these people getting stuffed into the into the subway carts or the mm-hmm. thousands of people in suits walking down those concrete sidewalks. And and I understand being bold and brave, and I think it's great for comparisons and strength in numbers. But I, I think that there needs to be some sort of individuality and dreaming sure. and risk taking. Mm-hmm. Why do you think we read about those fables of, you know, people leaving castles to slay dragons and save a princess and then eventually become a prince? Well, even though we're in the 21st century, wh- why can't we all become princes in one way or another? Sure. And sure. follow these destinies because you only get 100 years of this. And mm-hmm. I had this sort of thought at 18. Mm-hmm. And I was also, I guess, a little a little crazy mm-hmm. because I had no one to compare notes. Mm-hmm. But I had a Spanish teacher that saw I gravitated towards it, gave me a college recommendation letter. Mm-hmm. And fortunately for me, the late principal Norman Schmidt of Abington offset my terrible grades, <laughs> wrote me a recommendation letter because you're looking at a kid that's just swinging for fences. I wasn't, I wasn't on a roll, mm-hmm. but I, uh, I could do this Spanish thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I was the only one out of my friends that could do it. So I said, wait a second, this is James Bondish. Mm-hmm. Be marketable. Mm. Huh? And so my argument to my parents, because this was a very large four, in my case, five-year investment. <laughs> right. Young, great grandma and grandpa came at the turn of the 20th. They learned English. They were in the garment industry in New York. Mm-hmm. And they made their mark. We're nomads. You can't take that away in our family tradition. And they bought it. Mm-hmm. Do you know why they bought it? Because you're a compelling salesperson? No, no. It's quite simple, my friend dedicated practice Mm -hmm. okay i wasn't playing games they saw the above and beyond Mm -hmm. they know when the kid's running until the lights go out and the mom calls you home Mm -hmm. or let's use the karate kid for an example one of my favorite movies daniel's son trained with miyagi but there's a lot of the movie of him on that boat balancing and punching and especially being on that post on the beach doing his famous at the end of the movie kick Mm-hmm. And so when someone has that sort of heart mm-hmm. to put in dedicated practice where they're not expected, no one's paying you, you're right. getting up early, staying up late, asking the additional question. And there's always naysayers and gray believers that think you're cutting corners, kissing ass, or just doing the wrong thing. No, it's because they're not willing to go the distance mm-hmm. and make that sort of dedicated investment. Mm-hmm. And I cannot tell you how many times people told me that the mountain was too far mm-hmm. right. and you can't do this. And so you have to look at yourself in the mirror, my good friend, mm-hmm. and you have to make those life decisions. And I'm not saying it was the worst decision in the world, but my intention told me that by learning a second language and meeting Latinos that embraced me mm-hmm. and encouraged me and told my parents, this kid's got something, not just a pat on the head, good job, Skippy. These were tell signs. Sure. And this started when I was maybe eight or nine years old when I started repeating vocabulary. And so I I, I saw the signs Mm -hmm. and I was willing to gamble on it. And Mm -hmm. and I think most people might be a savant for something. They might have an expertise in one area and you're forced Mm -hmm. to march, Mm -hmm. but you might need to from time to time test the waters of life just to see where you can go. And Mm -hmm. that was me Mm -hmm. i was willing to die with my boots on it was Mm -hmm. as scary as it was uh, exhilarating Mm -hmm. and liberating Mm -hmm. and i was the person people would look at and say he's interesting go richard go and then they went back to their structured environment and (laughs) so for me i I really had to sail alone Mm -hmm. but you know what Mm -hmm. it's great (laughs) because you sometimes that's that's the hero's journey the one guy that leaves town to come back and explains the tall tales and wisdom so so that was me so so you worked for somebody for or worked with somebody for four years and then at some point you decided to start on your own what was it about that service industry that said this is something i can make a go of what 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 attracted you that because i mean most people like for example again i'm in the u.s um, our experience with call centers as a as a customer can be good can be bad can be right. whatever, but so we're see- I'm seeing a different side of it than you are, right? You're seeing it as you know people who are interacting with people or providing a service, um, et cetera. So, what is it about that that appealed to you? Stay with us. We'll be right back. 
photo retailers. Energize your sales with Share Me Chat, the proven texting platform. Using chat to text on your website keeps your customers connected and buying. See us at Pro and IPI to find out why dealers using Share Me Chat close more sales without adding staff. Find out more at shareme.chat. You're bringing up good points here. Uh, what appealed to me was I was getting older. <laughs> I was in my mid thirties and I realized time was a ticking mm -hmm. and um, I needed to put some chips on a table somewhere. What did I know? I knew this, <laughs> right? I didn't know C level and I didn't know it. And I started like reading things online and it was very intimidating. Sure. It's almost sure. like if you pick up a medical book, you, you know, the pictures, but you don't even understand some of this Latin and Greek language. And so um, I didn't want to burn myself out, mm -hmm. but I, as I mentioned earlier about delegating and finding the right people. Mm -hmm. So this is how I started my business. I, I knew the business, but I knew the inside. So I, I was renting a turnkey station at a blended center. So I offset the overhead in the IT to some guy. Mm -hmm. And I just paid premium for that turnkey station that was reliable a month. Was it comfortable? It's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like school bus cross country. It's like those double decker ones where you can relax a little bit oh, and yeah, have yeah. a movie. Yeah, but just still a bathroom right next to you. <laughs> so right, I mean, right. You know, you exactly. get the good and the bad. Right. And so, you know, it's one of those things you prioritize. I was able to pay my taxes, the overhead uh, commission to the agent, his salary and make my margin. And it was exciting. Mm -hmm. I mean, February 6th of 2008, I, I sold one seat for one week. Mm -hmm. That's not part of my business model now, but someone did buy my lemonade. <laughs> it was the greatest ever. Right. And so, um, and I still keep in touch with this client and I let them know, which is kind of interesting. I disclosed it to him after many years ago. Do you realize you're my first client? He's like, no. Mm -hmm. I go, yeah. He goes, but you sounded like you've been in the business. I go, I've been in the business. Right. I just didn't have my first sale. So he goes, Man, if you had told me, I go, but I didn't <laughs> believe in me. And look at us now. I did that for a couple of years. Right. And I did it so I could build capital, have stable clients, and then realize it wasn't worth the premium anymore. Mm -hmm. So then I rented space and I wanted to make sure it was downtown, not in the free trade zones or yonder. So people could walk there and get to there easily. It means I just couldn't build thousands, but I'm not at thousands. Mm -hmm. I rented a space for 150 seats and Back in 2009 and 10, there was attrition at some call centers. Sure. And so I was able to pick up furniture and equipment for a fraction of the cost. What a great way to build business. Mm -hmm. Did that for six years. And then once again, building on the momentum and the cash and the stability, I purchased this building we've been in, put on a third floor, mm -hmm. and it has the capacity for 300. And so, you know, I wish I could give you a shortcut and that rags to riches right. over a weekend but the majority of business building mm -hmm. is equivalent to building a building <laughs> you know it right. takes a brick at a time and 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 you need to breathe and you need to be responsible and, and enjoy your sunshine and have your rest and mm -hmm. it's the long game mm -hmm. and i did it all in cash mm -hmm. i never overextended i never took out mortgages or had a partner that put pressure mm -hmm. or was under the sort of influence to make unethical decisions right and so these are the sort of things that you want to turn down more business than you accept right because there's some clients that might just keep you up at night or wake you up too early and it's just not worth the money right depends on your industry mm -hmm. because in my industry in the call center industry yes there's burnout but i also compete against amazon hp intel and oracle plus dozens of the division one top players me today you tomorrow mm -hmm. somebody could quit today on the phone at Amazon tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So if you want to threaten them and bend them to break them, mm -hmm. you'll lose them. Right. And so there has to be the healthy balance of you doing your job and fulfilling, but me also, you know, engine that could and, and, and keep you going. It's, it's very labor intensive, especially since I am from Philly and I'm in Costa Rica and it's a different culture. <laughs> right. But I tell you what, my brother, and you know this, when you call the balls and the strikes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you praise in public and you make suggestions in private, mm -hmm. that works. Right. 
And I've been able to adjust ties on my agents that might be off balance a little bit, or how about this? Mm -hmm. Without prying, there might be things outside the office that could be affecting their performance. Right. So I'll judge you on a season average, not just what's going on today. Right. Because we've, we've all missed the shot before and I've had terrible rounds of golf in my time mm -hmm. and it um, doesn't mean I'm a bad golfer. It just means that I was completely thinking about something else that day compared to hanging out with my buddies on the ninth hole, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I am a bad golfer, so I can, I can really, <laughs> anyway, so you've kind of naturally gotten to the actual point that I wanted to get to for this conversation, which, which is sort of the interpersonal management style and right. working with different people. So thank you for being such a natural communicator to get to that point because we got there very, very well. So let's talk a little bit about that. You're in a, because like a lot of the photo industry production people, right there, it's, it's a very routine task. It's production. It's, it's not a creative task. It can be for some people, but for most people, you're operating a machine, you're doing something. And I can imagine in the call center business, it is also much a routine, right? You're dialing, you're dialing, you're taking calls, you're doing that. How do you manage, you know, various personalities when you have such a similar job that needs to be done across uh, an organization like yours? Well, if you think about people producing photographs at the old Kodak shop on Old York Road in Philly when I grew up, it wasn't <laughs> just handing on my pictures from my Kodak disc camera. Right. It's when they gave them back to me, they thanked me for the business. They asked how grandma was doing because they remember her from back in the day. Right. And they said, it looked like you had a wonderful summer, Richard. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, keep it up, buddy. And, and, you know, it's mm -hmm. the kind of thing you, you wave at them when you drive past them on the street and it's the soft skills. It's the bedside manner. It's mm -hmm. willing to drive four extra blocks for your favorite pizza place because Paulie makes it with extra, extra pineapple right. on your Hawaiian. And right. so I love those sort of personal relationships. So let's, let's go back to any sort of interpersonal contact that people have yes every job is monotonous in one way or another sure but it's really that final presentation when you open it up and show the burger mm -hmm. or you put it on the table or how you pour the drink or you smile mm -hmm. what i've tried to do i consider it a romantic death mm -hmm. follow me here you might have 10 minute conversations on the phone or in person or whatever mm -hmm. i believe that the 10 minutes doesn't exist mm -hmm. I believe in 30 second checkpoints. So you're talking about 20, 30 second conversations on a phone call, which combines the 10 minutes right. because chapters change in a book and a movie and they're zig and zag. Mm -hmm. Sure. So when we start a conversation and if it's outbound prospecting, for an example, mm -hmm. what I like to do is do a company name spike prior to introducing myself. Mm -hmm. I'll say the name of the company better than you or the person who answers the phone. Mm -hmm. And that's only in the first couple seconds. Right. And so what does that do? That reduces the defense of somebody that's black and blue from getting all these phone calls and people trying to sidestep to speak to, you know, to Gary. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's just not the way that it goes. Mm -hmm. And so you start off by saying something they're familiar with and you do it in a certain way, which is a great first impression. Mm -hmm. And then usually they will be asking you, who are you? Mm -hmm. And it's just saying, who's this? Or we're good. Or are you a salesman? <laughs> you, can, you can gauge right. their positive reaction in sure. their tone by saying, who's this? You know, go, hey, Gary, I'm so glad that you asked. My name is Richard Blank. Mm -hmm. It's a buffer boomerang technique. Mm -hmm. You say the name of the person to buffer them. You let them know it's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. You repeat the question to show active listening, which will shave time and reduce stress. Mm -hmm. And then you send back that boomerang with a positive thing. And so let's just say once again, who am I in the name of my company and what I do? And I keep saying, Gary, that's a, so glad you brought that up. My company is a call center in Costa Rica. And so then finally say, you know what? I'm going to pass you to Mr. Smith. I'm going to give you the pass to pitch, Richard, because you just sound very nice and we're engaged and weren't rushing. Mm -hmm. And then I'd say, yo, Gary, before you transfer this call, I'm just going to let you know you did great, but I'm also going to let Mr. Smith know this. And so it's a positive escalation. Mm -hmm. So then you pass me to Smith. And the first thing I do to Smith is not the company name spike. I do the positive escalation spike. Hello, this is angry Mr. Smith, where no one ever gets through when I'm about to hang up on you, salesman. I'm going to go, 
Hey, Mr. Smith, got to let you know, Gary's the greatest person you ever have working for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Who's this? Because Gary's my son. Mm -hmm. Gary's been with me for 20 years. Gary's my most trusted confidant. So all of a sudden you get the, instead of who's this, we're good, thanks. How the hell did you get through? Right, (laughs) exactly. Oh, thank you so much. And now I'm anchoring Mm -hmm. naturally. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it goes from a 10 to a two with defense. And then that eight goes forward. Mm -hmm. So you're moving from a vertical to a horizontal in regards to momentum and Mm -hmm. pacing. Mm -hmm. And throughout the call, you can use transitional sentences Mm -hmm. if things make sense and sounds good, right? For checkpoints. Mm -hmm. You can also, I like doing pauses before names and numbers. That's a, that's a trigger word. Mm -hmm. And you can spike that. And these are things sight unseen where, you know, people are coming back into the conversation kind of like a, a shepherd with the sheep, you, mm-hmm. they can wiggle, but right. they still got to go back to the barn. And sure. so I got to underwater thumbs up and checkpoint you, my brother, just to make sure we're good. Mm-hmm. And I do this constantly. And then at the end of the call, when I do my meeting minutes and I send you an email, you know, I'm going to talk about Gary mm-hmm. in that email. So when I call your company back to speak to Mr. Smith, mm-hmm. you answer the phone, you go, Hey, Richie, What's up, Gary? Go, <laughs> my man. You know, yeah. I've been working here for 20 years and no one's ever said anything about me. I want to thank you so much. I'm like, it's my pleasure, buddy. Mm-hmm. Hey, listen, by the way, Mr. Smith's birthday is next week. Mm-hmm. By the way, it's his 50th anniversary with his wife. His little kid, Billy, just hit a home run last week. And we're building a second location with a loading dock. Mm-hmm. Just want to let you know he might be busy in the next couple of weeks. Oh, I'm going to just transfer you right away. It's like, All right. mm-hmm. My main man. And then at the end of the day, and I've heard this from multiple clients. Mm-hmm. They can choose India and the Philippines for half my price, or somebody knows somebody that's passing it along the lead. Mm-hmm. But when Gary walks into Jones's office and they're having their afternoon coffee mm-hmm. and they need to make that decision with whom they're going to give the business, mm-hmm. a lot of the times collectively they'll choose me. I'll win it on merit because I can show such good faith prior to any sort of contract. So could sure. you imagine the relationship that we have working with one another. And that's how I earn the majority of my business from these guys that hear it all day long. Right. And I just don't want to be chum in the water with the sharks. I I really need to separate myself. So it's still pure. Mm -hmm. So that relationship has that sort of endurance to go the distance. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Money is all around us, and we think about it more than almost every other aspect of our lives. But how can we make more of it, and what's our drive for building wealth beyond just the numbers in our bank account? Join us on the Make More podcast as our host, Matt Heslin, brings to you a dynamic lineup of experts in the world of investing, business, health, and beyond. Together, they unpack the secrets to not just surviving, but thriving in today's economy. It's about more than just wealth. It's about crafting life experiences, seizing opportunities, and building a legacy. Subscribe now to the Make More with Matt Heslin podcast and join us every week for new expert insights and inspiration. So how do you take that philosophy, that those customer service skills, and translate that down to your rank and file people, right? Because that is your business is not only what you just did landing, you know, Mr. Smith. uh, But, you know, you've got to have your people have the skills to do that. Of course. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing I do, my good friend, when they come into the company is they get a chance to hang out in the arcade downstairs and play pinball and Pac-Man with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I collect pinball machines, got an air hockey table. Mm -hmm. Why? Why not? Let's start with dessert. Let's start with recess. So these strangers become best friends after a half an hour. And instead of absorbing, now they're contributing. Right. I got them in a good mood. And also, even prior to that, when I'm trying to filter naturally, people are filling out their resumes and putting in all the bells and the whistles, Gary. You've Mm -hmm. seen it before. Sure. So for me, I ask them, listen, buddy, why don't you turn the piece of paper over Give me a couple paragraphs of a coming of age moment so I can gauge your English and your grammar. And also, I want to hear a time when you beat up a bully or saved a kitten or potentially did it both in one day. (laughs) And so I get to see them not memorize answers and and put their chest out. But I want to know if Gary's really considering three companies and he's going to choose you. 
And right. he asks you that zig and zag question. Give me a time you beat up a bully or one. Mm-hmm. Are you capable of putting your script down mm-hmm. and having a real conversation and being vulnerable with this man so you can be powerful? Mm-hmm. And so what I do, because I am the owner of a company from Philly, could be intimidating. It's only intimidating because of what happened to you at your last job. Mm-hmm. There's an expression in Spanish, borrar y cuenta nueva, mm-hmm. starting from scratch in a clean slate. So as much as I'm not going to gauge you on what happened with Billy last week when he didn't come to work, don't judge me on this supervisor with coffee breath screaming at you. Mm -hmm. That's not fair. Mm -hmm. And it's not right. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to play that sophomore game, then maybe it's not the right stage for you. But trust me, we're not even there when they're sitting in the training room. These are are people that don't want to hunker down and hide behind people in the classroom not to be called on but they're also not front row center waving their hand like a class pet. Right. These are players. Mm -hmm. These are squires that are looking for a knight. Mm -hmm. Okay. They want that sort of reinforcement from a real cat that's willing to invest in them. Mm -hmm. And the skills that I'm giving them, it's not a one and a done. Right. These are the sort of interpersonal advanced soft skills that can save marriages and make them more money and help them network, make, you know, Gary, make them more self-reliant and Mm self-confident. And so when they meet me for the first time and I shatter this misconception, they still got to calm down a little bit after spending a couple hours with me on the first day in class. Mm -hmm. And when I share with them certain ideas that I have where I use proper rhetoric, so it does make sense. Mm -hmm. At the end of the class, they look at me differently and they usually say, hey, not only are you the first boss that I ever met, Mm-hmm. The only one who ever did training like this. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, Gary, my boy, I said, you know what? I might be the only one that does this. Mm-hmm. Now, I imagine you have quite a few of your employees who are actually referred to by existing employees. That must be uh, something you see quite a bit. Yeah. And it's humbling. Mm-hmm. I mean, people have options. Mm-hmm. And as I say before, I can compete financially mm-hmm. and pay the taxes and be at a good location. But but somebody does make a decision on where they invest their time, mm-hmm. especially these bilingual agents that earn more than most vocations. Right. A lot of my agents earn more than doctors and attorneys if right. they have the skill sets. Mm-hmm. And so when I see them, and you know what, it's true. When you've been on the phone or remember when you were a freshman and now you're a senior and now for me, I'm a teacher. I see myself in others. Mm-hmm. And it's like Francis Ford Coppola's movie, The Black Stallion. You have the most incredible, beautiful stallion. That's the fastest in the world. The only thing it needs is a little bit of structure to learn how to run around a track. Right. And so I need to get rid of bad habits, Mm -hmm. instill good habits, which are real habits Mm -hmm. that don't compromise ethics. I just want you to show up on time and be a straight shooter. Right. You know, and stop saying the word help on the phone. Say guy to sister, lend a hand. Right. And stop saying excuse me to Gary. It's for my clarification. Remember, we spoke about falling on certain swords Mm -hmm. and choosing your battles wisely so we can keep the tone positive. Mm -hmm. These are balance sort of things to give people, even though the job might be monotonous, you can still be in the now. If not, you're going to cut your finger. You're going to zone out and miss the barking dog in the background that you could have anchored on Mm -hmm. and gotten the account, Mm -hmm. or you forgot to ask somebody's name. So to give them that compliment when you were transferred. And so it's a boxer. It's Chuck Wepner on the 15th round against Ali. Mm -hmm. Man, that guy did go the distance. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, it's round by round, Mm -hmm. minute by minute and second by second, almost like a soldier. Um, I was just kind of, you kind of mentioned the bad habits thing, right? Um, That's got to be a lot of uh, programming, I guess, to overcome. You mentioned earlier in the conversation about, you know, praising publicly and correcting privately. Can you talk a little bit about that correcting privately piece, how, uh, how you can handle that well? Well, listen, the average age of the call center agent here is 24. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm a little older than 24, and both of you and I used to have hair at 24. <laughs> but looking in the mirror with my, my friend Gary, I want them to live life. I want them to date and fall in love and raise families and, mm-hmm. and go to the beach. But I can't have them come in late, laggard, drunk, hungover, and just, you know, not on the top of their game because it's not just me, champ. We got a couple people in the United States that are paying for this that are depending on you. Mm-hmm. And 
as long as they're not severely breaking the labor laws, if it's the kind of thing where I will pull you to the side mm -hmm. and ask you to go to the bathroom to put some water on your face, I think I've made my point. Mm -hmm. That's when I'll usually get a knock on my door at the end of the day. And I have an open door policy, but not like what you think. People aren't coming to, to angle in. Some guy after a shift will say, you know, Richard, yeah, you did catch me sleeping or I wasn't on top of my game. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I could write them up or give them a verbal warning. Why? Mm -hmm. There's a hardcore soldier that's been doing this for seven years. And, mm -hmm. and then the next thing you know, he's like, dude, I'm having problems at home. Right. And so you're like, you know, you never mess with money or kids. But in private, mm -hmm. quite interesting because, as I mentioned, there's preventative measures first because they'll realize their QA scores aren't up to speed or they're tardy every day. And it's not me, my man. Mm -hmm. It's your coworkers, the people that see you every day that will, like when I sat in the cubicles, when I first got to Costa Rica, that's the chatter. That's the, that's the peanut gallery. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that will call you out on it because they're like, yo, man, I showed up on time. What's up with you? Right. And you're yeah. going to put the account in jeopardy. And then I, I don't want to go to the other account. I want to stay here. Right. Come on. Each one of us has to carry the canoe. Right. And so if it ever gets to my stage, I know what you're thinking, and it's probably how we all were raised when we had to go to the principal's office right. at school because you might have broken something or did something. Right. You were chewing gum in class. Exactly. You know? And so these people, once again, it's the Barar Quentin Nueva. They're judging me on all these other walks of shame, mm. coming to my office about to get berated, mm. insulted by the boss. Ooh, man, will you walk in with pride? Mm. Oh, what sort of in culture and environment do you think I've created here? Mm -hmm. And so I need to calm them down from breaking down mm -hmm. and crying and spinning out of control. I will usually offer them some delicious Costa Rican coffee. Mm -hmm. I always have cookies in my office. So you get a cookie. <laughs> I have an asteroids machine in my office. You want to play some asteroids? Let's play some asteroids because you need to calm down mm -hmm. right now. And once everyone calms down, I'll pull the call. We'll listen to the time you interrupted, Gary. Mm -hmm. You cross talk. You didn't do the military alphabet when you were reviewing the email address. Mm -hmm. You were loud. You were soft. You were, you were off. Mm -hmm. You're slicing in the woods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You're triple bogey in your call. <laughs> hey, wait, no, no, don't, don't, don't criticize my, criticize my golf game. <laughs> hey, you brought it up. Anyway, anyway, happy Gilmore. I'll, I'll, then I'll say, yo, Gary, come on, man. Last week you broke a record. You did 44. Mm -hmm. We're at midday today, and you're at 12. Mm -hmm. You're better than this, right? So you're right. I've seen you at your best. You have. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to call you out on it because we love you here and we respect you here. Mm -hmm. Am I going to get fired? You're not going to get fired. Mm -hmm. And it's not even about me, my brother, because I've walked in those shoes. It's the seven people that you sit with in row three mm -hmm. that you have pizza with and you, and you play air hockey with. They want to see the champ back. Mm -hmm. It's your coworkers that need your synergy. Right need you, your current, your electromagnetic energy mm -hmm. to get us out of the bed on a rainy Wednesday, to come into the office and sit down and make 200 phone calls. Mm -hmm. It's not for the slight of heart. Right. I mean, if you're capable of doing this dance of speech, then it's beautiful and it cuts through butter like a hot knife. But a lot of people, if they're not in the right frame of mind, man, it is a drag. <laughs> right. Exactly. And it's not the kind of thing where you're just in the in the shop putting something in a box and you can just zone out in your thoughts. You you have to perform. Mm -hmm. You have to perform. A goalie can't catch the puck. They're going to pull you out. Right. Singer not hitting the numb. You can tell. Right. As much as AI is taking over mm -hmm. and a lot of companies prefer to invest in omni channel non-voice support like chat and emails, which I think assists you and I by speaking with people, extending empathy, really caring is something a, a machine could never do. Right. That's that human connection. And so once they become a fading flower, a, a print, we have problems. You should always be a painting on a daily basis. Even if it's repetitive, you could still put your pepperoni on that same way every day, which is beautiful. Mm -hmm, You're right. supposed to do things like this. How about this? 
imagine having to make 100 calls a day. Mm. But the artist, the photographer, or the person would rather make 84. Why? Because he waits an extra three seconds for the butterfly. Or I wait a couple extra seconds to speak about your son, your dog, and your anniversary to talk about Gary. Do twice listening, one speak. So they give the chance for that mm -hmm. to come back. Right. And you, you could make camp. Mm -hmm. You could stop selling steak and now it's lobster. And so give yourself the opportunity to choose that other adventure. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's what sometimes people are lacking on these calls, the give and the take. So you mentioned some just now AI, which in our industry, imaging, of course, is a big deal now with, with all that. But it's sort of, it is the question of, you know, you always hear about how it's going to impact customer service and things like that. And I think in some ways it will, obviously, where it's a routine transaction, right? I, you know, what are your store hours? You know, those kind of things. Of but course. but to differentiate yourself, you know, it doesn't sound to me like you've ever, that would ever be a competition for the type of business you go for. Absolutely, it is. Mm -hmm. A okay. lot of my accounts have automated. Mm -hmm. Intake coordination is done by filling out a form compared to speaking to someone putting into the system. Right, okay. You have to understand something, and I know you know this. I press zero. Mm -hmm. I want to speak with somebody at right. my airline, at my bank, right. wherever I'm calling, if it's that IVR where I got to punch in info and it keeps repeating and they don't get it or transferring right. or not enough. Zero, zero, zero. Right. Zero. There will always be a certain market for people that want that real home cooked meal, not, sure. a, not a microwave frozen. Right. Is it reduced? Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at bu look at buggy rides in the park. It didn't especially go away, and the buggy whip industry did get reduced. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's still there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It's still there. Yeah. And um, I can't stress enough to my clients, mm -hmm. use them to generate the lead, opt in the data. Legally, you got it. Mm -hmm. But when you get somebody on the phone compared to someone that writes something with this AI, there could be misinterpretation. Sure. Okay. With bold cap or how they write it or grammar, spelling or vocabulary and miscommunication. Sure. Terribly frustration. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think when you get somebody on the phone, you can gauge temperature levels. Mm -hmm. You can also retain upsell mm -hmm. referral. Right. Mm -hmm, and build that sort of relationship that you wouldn't have gotten when someone just has to go to a kiosk to put in the burger. And, you know, it's the kind of thing where even though I put in extra pickles, it's one thing, but it's the guy at the counter goes, that sounds so tasty. You know, yeah. it makes you want to do a second patty. Right. It's you're really avoiding any sort of natural momentum on that. Mm -hmm. It feels so cold mm -hmm. to me mm -hmm. now. An ATM machine saves me plenty of time, 24-7, you get your cash a I got you. Predictive dialers have really helped us out because you're not smart or manual dialing. So we can make up to 600 calls a day, depending on the drop call ratio and the amount of lines we're using. So we can really be on the phone speaking and engaged for pretty much an entire hour minus wrap-up time and disposition. So it really has assisted us in gathering contact ratios and things mm. but you don't want someone to get lazy or complacent mm -hmm. sure you really need to be in the moment and trying to do something that is at least making your bed in the morning because if it's always made for you mm -hmm. i don't think it's a different sort of feel to it because by making your bed you're you're beginning and ending a day with a bow Right. And it's yours. And, and it's just that sort of self-respect you give yourself. I'm not asking you to clean your entire house. Sure. But if any sort of business of yours, they keep automating it and shaving the spring in your step and, and shaving the sparkle, mm -hmm. then what the hell do you expect at the end of the night on Halloween? Right. It's the worst candy and, and, <laughs> and the people aren't going to want it anymore. And right. so... And it's not even that. What about the employee that's on the front line? You're going to kill the morale mm, and right. you won't allow them to express themselves anymore. They'll just feel like a, they'll feel like they're working for the machine. And, and, and that would be a problem. Well, wow, you've given us a lot to think about. Uh, you've, I'm just trying to 
you know, wrap my head around some of this stuff. I'm going to definitely talk to my uh, guy at the hamburger joint about how many pickles I'm going to have on my burger and see if he yeah. upsells me a patty. See, he almost see how that works. But we'll just let him know that his burger is better than McDonald's. Right. I always do that. Whoever yeah. their competition is, I'll say yours is better than theirs. And I go, isn't that right, Maria? Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you know, when you say bastante pepinillos, you, you see, as they say, a rascacielo, a, a skyscraper. Yeah. But hey, man, I've gotten bumped up the first class and given a window seat at the crowded restaurant. Mm -hmm. And I've done this prior to when they were either waiters or customer service reps. So if you keep going to a place like you and I, we're old in it. You've been going there for years or decades. Mm -hmm. You realize the shoe shine kid is now the general manager. <laughs> right. And when you see when you see my main man mm -hmm. and it's Mother's Day and you didn't have a reservation mm -hmm. and you show up and the line's long, he sees you at the back of the line, says, Give me one minute. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, you're right up front. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love paying it forward, my brother. Mm -hmm. And I love doing it in writing and verbally. I love letting people's supervisors and managers and owners of and I don't want a dessert in return. Right. I remember when I was doing that. And that's the sort of thing that can get someone over that hump that they have when they might be second guessing. Right. Yeah. Cause I mean, if you're looking at it to get something out of it, you're not being motivated uh, properly for that. You could, I mean, 10 years later, I got the seat at, at mother's day, <laughs> but I didn't know I was going to get that back in 2014. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thing. So where can people go to get more information about what it is your company does? Well, they can buy a ticket, fly here and come visit me personally and walk <laughs> the roads. I'm my I'm call center is different than what you see on TV or in <laughs> Wolf of Wall Street and Boiler Room. But um, yeah, but it's uh, you can go to my Facebook fan page, Costa Rica's call center. OK. And we have one hundred and twenty seven thousand. Wow. Local Costa Ricans in the industry that's here on the number one page for the country for employment and info. And just real quick for your audience, we are north of Panama, south of Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. Costa Rica is the only democratic society in, in Central America, and there's no standing army. So they put their money back into education. They have a 95% literacy rate. So I got a killer labor pool. Best infrastructure known for medical and ecotourism. And I think a lot of your audience likes to surf. And so <laughs> Mal Pais and Hermosa, we have some of the greatest and first class surfing in the entire world. And I can't thank you enough. I had the greatest time, Gary. You do a wonderful podcast. Well, thank you. you. Bring out the best in people. And I hope I was able to shed some light and maybe even shatter some misconceptions on what a call center is like. It <laughs> doesn't need to be a death march. <laughs> Make a very good living making and receiving phone calls. You just have to choose the place you work at wisely. Don't compromise your ethics for a dollar. You don't have to do sweepstakes scams. <laughs> Use those skills for other things because if, if you have those sort of skills, then you're marketable and just find the right environment and then just blow it up. Well, thank you, Richard. Great to see you and uh, looking forward to connecting with you later. Thank you, my friend. Enjoy today. Thank you for listening to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. Read more great stories and sign up for the newsletter at www.thedeadpixelssociety.com.